Hello everyone, welcome to What If Deku Got Isekai'd in the World of Fairy Tale Part 2. Before we start please go support Immortal King 71 for writing that awesome fanfic, now let's begin. Part 8. Izuku Superman landed on the ground beneath him as the stones from above smashed into the ground, causing dust to float in the air. Izuku. Stop. Zalti looked behind to see Izuku with darkness around half his body. Izuku. Where did you think you were going? Zalti. How did you find me? Izuku. Where I come from there is this Sicho with a similar technique who tried to kill me many times before, so I trained my mind to find her. Zalti. That's impressive, but I must resurrect Deliora and you can't stop me. Zalti smiled while standing behind him sealed in ice was Deliora. Izuku. It's as big as Gigantamachia at full power so that Deliora the demon of destruction. Izuku said in fear. Zalti. That's right and today it will come back. The purple pillar of light filled the entire room over Deliora, causing the water to start melting. Izuku. Tell me what the real reason you're following Leon I can easily tell you're stronger than him. Zalti. The cold emperor Leon is an arrogant twit he doesn't stand a chance against Deliora that's where I come in. Izuku. You know for a girl you have a bad tongue. Zalti. How did you? Izuku. I've faced your kind of people before Kami has a similar power, so it wasn't hard now tell me will you show me your real face or not. Zalti. Maybe another time. Izuku. So what's got you so hooked on Deliora? Zalti. I want to control the demon there are spells out there that give you complete control over immortal beings like Deliora, and with this demon by my side, I'll be the most powerful wizard of them all. Izuku. That's your answer I'm sorry to even ask. Zalti. What, Izuku? You're the kind of person who's hungry for power thinking all you need is a monster to make you tough well you're wrong I've killed a monster twice as strong as this and defeated others more powerful than even you so don't think for a second I'll lose to a bastard like you. Zalti. Laugh I suppose you're too young to realize, but you will understand in the future that it is important to have power on your side. Izuku. Is that so? Izuku. I don't give a crap how powerful you are cause I'll destroy you. Zalti. Don't let your feelings control your actions cause you'll still loss. Izuku. I could care less of how powerful you are. Izuku destroyed each of the stones and went down on Zalti. Izuku. Because I'll save everyone St. Louis smash. Zalti. I I ah. Uh. Izuku sent Zalti straight into a boulder knocking him out of commission everything was alright however if Ate me had other plans. Deliora had awoken. Bray looked up at the face of Deliora and picked up the water that once was his master. Bray. Thank you. Izuku. Gray what are you doing here? Bray. Izuku. Izuku. We need to stop this thing the magic it's giving off is triple that off Gigantamachia. Leon. Groaning. Leon crawled to them with a deranged look on his face as he spoke. Leon. Neither of you is strong enough, but I am I will defeat it. Bray. Leon, Leon. I will surpass her finally he dot dot he dot dot he. Izuku. No way you aren't strong enough not even close. Leon. I've waited so long for this moment. Eliora saw them and growled its deep voice echoed throughout the entire cave. Memories of Lion and Ur flowed through the sicko's mind as he began to stand. Leon. She was strong, but still not strong enough to defeat that demon, now I will surpass her. Leon's memory of being jealous flowed through his mouth. Leon. Finally my dream will be fulfilled. Bray punched Leon in the gut knocking him out. Bray. You've caused enough trouble now I will clean up the mess you've made. Bray. I'll seal the demon myself. Bray. Iced shell. Leon. Don't do it Gray do you know how long it took me to free Deliora. Bray. I don't have time to worry about that now I need to stop this monster. However, Izuku stood in front of Gray. Bray. Izuku. Izuku. Go Gray get out of here. Bray. Don't be stupid get out of my way. Izuku. I won't. Gray grab Leon and go. Bray. I can. Izuku. I said go now. Izuku turned to Gray showing him a frightened and shaking face shocking him. Gray thoughts. He's terrified and yet. Gray. Why are you doing this? Izuku. Because your master's crying Gray she wants you to get out of here she's afraid. Gray's eyes widened and tears came to the edge of his eyes. Izuku. Please Gray. Suddenly Deliora roared again and reeled its fist back Izuku closed his own eyes and began to fight as well. Izuku. One for all 100%. Izuku. Let's do this. Izuku jumped to Deliora as Deliora sent its fist at him. Izuku. I I I. Deliora. Ro I I. Izuku. Fine it's fine I will not let him past me so run. Bray could only stare as tears fell down his face as he was on his knees. Izuku. Ruun. Deliora. Ru I I. Izuku. Shoot An explosion sent Izuku smashing into the ground and Deliora tumbling back onto the stone wall. Bray. Izuku, please stop. He said on his knees. Izuku. I can't lose here. Izuku got back up clutching his fist harder as the green arcs around him turned crimson and surged around him. Bray. Stop it, Izuku. I won't give up a i i a. Izuku. I will defeat Yao. Bray. Stu up it, Izuku. A i a. The female voice echoed through Izuku head. Save me, Izuku. Even if it's set in stone I will never stop fighting to save the people who need saving, Izuku. 
I I I, Ray. Izuku Uu. The Leora and Izuku vanished into the crimson light, and a massive beam of crimson blew to the sky, shocking Natsu, Urza, Lucy, and Happy and Izuku's voice echoed throughout everyone's head, Izuku. No one else will suffer no more tears will be shed because I will protect their smiles, stop song. As the light vanished Grey saw Izuku lying down on the ground and his master were lying down on top of him. Grey was shocked beyond belief not only did Izuku kill Deliora, he also saved his master, Grey. Izuku. Grey ran to the two and shook them till they woke up. Izuku. What happened? Err. Where am I? The two looked at each other, Err then jumped onto Izuku and hugged him tightly. Err. In back thank you so so much Izuku. Izuku. No problem. Grey. Master. Gray jumped and hugged the two tightly all three laughed with tears. Gray. Thank you Izuku thank you so so much. Scene change. Natsu. Oh yeah we won haha. <laughs> Happy. I sir. The entire group was outside of the cave celebrating their victory. Lucy. You know I was kinda worried for a while there, but it all worked out thanks to her. Err. I really didn't do much it was all Izuku. Gray. Yeah she's right without him I would have been a goner. Izuku. He. Natsu. Haha <laughs> woohoo we totally finished an S class quest alright. Lucy. Do you think the master will let us on the second floor now? And then it hit the Urza. Urza told them what they were forgetting about meanwhile Izuku and Ur were talking. Err. So she was the one you punched. Izuku. Yep. Err. You terrified right. Izuku. Yep. Err kissed his cheek. Err. At least take that to your grave. Izuku. Crying and I'm tears yep. And with that, the group left to the village to destroy the moon. Izuku. So what are we doing? Urza. We will be destroying the moon it's the only way to turn the villagers back into humans Natsu I'll need your help. The village erupted into cheers at Urza's words, what Urza and Natsu spoke on how they would do it. Lucy. How do you think this will go? Izuku. She's insane man. Gray. I agree. Err. I second you. Happy. This is exiting. Urza and Natsu left to throw Urza's spear into the moon, and as the spear was launched into the sky, Natsu punched it using his fire fist, sending it towards the moon. Gray. This is bad. Lucy. What are they thinking? The spear got closer and closet to the moon, or so they thought cracks appeared on the moon however the sky shattered instead. Lucy Izuku Grayer. What the? Happy. I sir. Urza explained to the group why it was the sky that broke, and how the villagers forgot about who they really were, and that Bobo the son of the village chief was really alive, not dead from there they all began to celebrate. Izuku decided to sit alone however the demon girls who had crushes on him took him to dance while Urza, Natsu, Grey, Lucy, and Happy partied, that's when the other members of Leon's team showed up. Izuku walked towards them alongside Urza, Lucy. Watch out for that creepy chick she can control things like dolls, Natsu. And don't even bother using magic against old mega brows, Urza. Is that so, Izuku? In that case, Izuku. We'll do it the old the fashioned way. Both Izuku and Urza sent the boy and girl into the ground with a single attack, causing the village and other fairy tailors to speak of their strength. Girl. You two are truly amazing warriors. Boy. No kidding we're no match for you two. They said as they smiled at the two. Lucy. Ah wait so you're not here to attack us. Boy. I doubt this will settle things, but we came here in person to apologize. Girl. The cold emperor told us about what you did Sir Izuku and how you avenged all the lives that were lost. Gray. Wait you mean you were victims of Deliora too, boy. When we were children we watched our friends and family be murdered before our eyes, girl. The cold emperor had a plan to finish the demon once and for all, boy. You see we wanted revenge so badly we never realized we were hurting innocent people, girl. We were blinded by our hatred and acted no better than the demon itself from now on we'll treat people with respect and love. Izuku walked to the two gaining everyone attention and placed his hands on their heads petting them, Izuku. I can understand that feeling the need to destroy the one thing which caused you so much pain to suffer for so long, only for nothing to come your way for it to always be alone in that feeling. Urza looked down as the two looked up, Izuku. But instead of hurting others or yourself for it live the life you were so lucky to keep life isn't something to be thrown away, but treasured so as long as you keep breathing always live your life to the fullest and I will protect your smiles deal. The two looked at Izuku with tears in their eyes, Izuku. So let me say the one thing that should have been said long ago, he hugged the two, Izuku. It's okay to cry I'm here for you let it all out the two clutched Isaac's shirt as they broke down into his chest, letting out all their pain and sadness that they held for so so long. Little did they know Zalti was hiding in the trees above them, that is until Zalti turned into a woman. The next day, the group decided that it was time to go home sadly Urza didn't accept the reward only the gate key, and going back to the pirates they went back to Harjan. In Harjan, the group walked happily back to the guild. Natsu. We're home. Happy. We're home. Err. This town is beautiful. Gray. Come on master I can't wait to introduce you to the guild, err. Slow down Gray, Urza. You all should be grateful that we got something from that job, Lucy. Yep a gate key it's super rare, happy. Can we sell it, Lucy? 
How can you even suggest that sure there are a lot of Silvergate keys, but there are only 12 gold keys, and I'm lucky enough to have 5. Izuku Natsu. It's too bad they're all crazy. Natsu and Izuku high-fived. Lucy. You had better watch your mouth punk me, and my celestial spirits will stronger than the both of you one day you'll see. Gray. So which key did you end up getting, Lucy? It's Sagittarius the Centaur. Gray spun around instantly. Gray. It's a horseman. They all began to imagine different versions of a horseman however Natsus was just plain stupid, not even a horse or a man. Urza. You're all so carefree it's almost as if you've forgotten you face punishment when you get back to the guild. All. Gasp. Natsu. But why? Lucy. Even though we completed the quest. Urza. That's only because I came along to help stealing an S-class quest is a serious offense. They all stopped and looked at Urza, except for Izuku who was walking away. Urza. Where are you goy? Izuku. I'm going home I'll see you in the guild tomorrow guys on ya hey gray let her crash at your place. Gray. Right. It was clear to them Izuku was still hurt by Urza, so no one dared to ask anything Urza herself looked down and kept walking forward. Natsu. What's up with him? Lucy. I'll tell you later. Happy. Aye. They all followed Urza back to the guild. Part 9 Special Chapter for the Fans. Izuku was standing in front of his mirror checking his body over it was currently 8pm, and Isaac's date with Mira was about to happen, and let's just say he looks good. Taking his rose bouquet Izuku walked out of his house and onto his magic motorcycle. Putting on his black motorcycle helmet Izuku drove all the way to the Strauss house. At the Strauss house. Izuku walked up to the door and knocked twice, and Elfman opened the door. Elfman. Hi Izuku can I help you? Izuku. Hey Elfman yeah I'm here for my date with Mira. Elfman. Oh she'll be down in a second. Izuku. Hm Elfman you seem to trust Mira with me why is that? Elfman. Because knowing of your past and everything you've gone through I realize that being a real man is being like you, so you are my idol, and after you helped me with my problem let me cry into your shoulder, I realize that if anyone was allowed to go on a date with my sister, it would be you. Izuku, thank you Elfman. Elfman. No problem. Izuku. Izuku looked behind Elfman only to see an angel. Mira walked slowly to Izuku as her gorgeous snow white hair fluttered in the wind. It seemed like sparkles flowed around her as she walked to him, and the night became filled with light, and she got to his side with a smile that would put heaven's beauty to shame. Stop song. Mira. Izuku hey Izu. Izuku. M.M. Mira. Mira. I look weird. Izuku. An angel. Mira blushed heavily at Isaac's words, while Elfman smirked. Elfman. Your real man Midoriya have to fun big sis. Elfman pushed Mira out and closing the door however Mira tripped and fell only to softly land on Izuku's chest. Izuku. You ready to go on our date? Mira simply nodded Izuku pulled apart and slowly kissed her hand softly. Izuku. Sai you look beautiful beyond compare Mira I mean it. Mira. Thank you Izu you look very handsome as well. Izuku and Mira smiled with a blush before Izuku took Mira's hand and slowly guided her to his motorcycle, helping her up Izuku sat beside in front of her and started the motorcycle in fear Mira hugged Izuku tightly as he began to drive away. First stop, Izuku and Momo reached a five-star restaurant in Magnolia, shocking Mira since it took almost a year to make reservations there. It's night time, Izuku guided the speechless Mirahin in reaching the receptionist. Receptionist. How may I help you sir? Izuku. I made a booking under the name Izuku Midoriya, receptionist. Ah Monsieur Midoriya it's a pleasure please write this way, and your mademoiselle is gorgeous, I believe her name is Marahin. Izuku, thank you sir, receptionist. But of course and here we are. The receptionist guided Izuku and Marahin to the top floor ad outside under the gorgeous stars where they were alone, and a table was set with food waiting for them, Mira was about to sit when the receptionist stepped on Izuku's shoe. Izuku. Awa, receptionist. Be a gentleman, the French man said as Izuku nodded and walked forward pulling Mira's chair out shocking her, but that shock came to an end as soon as she sat down, and Izuku pulled the chair in for her taking a seat himself, receptionist. I how the madam and sir enjoy, Izuku Mira. Thank you. After the man left Izuku and Mira began to eat, talk and laugh together Mira and Izuku were having the best day of her life, but it wasn't finished yet after they left the restaurant it was midnight, Izu. Hey Mira I'd like to take you somewhere before the night ends, Mira. Hm, where, Izuku come with me. Putting Mira on the bike Izuku drove away again. The cool breeze brushed against Mira's face, the leaves that flowed within the wind played a tune, and the sparkling night shined upon the two stars, a beautiful artwork glided with the two as they reached a forest. Taking her hand Izuku pulled her with him into the forest passing tree after tree, it seemed as if time had slowed down for the two, Mira could only look in awe as the owls sang, the deer and antelope ran around the two fireflies flew around them like magic, the trees moved in sympathy as they reached a stop, and Izuku turned to Mira, his beautiful emerald eyes reflected the gorgeous forest, taking her hand softly he placed them over her eyes and whispered, Izuku. 
don't look until I say so. She felt his gentle hands take one of her own, leaving the other to cover both her eyes. As he guided her too forward the cold breeze left and was exchanged with a warm welcoming wind. Izuku stopped and spoke again. Izuku. Now open. She opened her eyes to see the most enchanting sight she had ever seen. An enchanting purple outlined the gorgeous moon its light reflected off the gorgeous river. Shinning butterflies however in the air like family stones stood beside the river separating it from the luscious grass. And single island stood in the middle of the magic lake and on it a lone tall tree that danced with the wind. Taking her hand Izuku guided her into the water and walked towards the island. A feeling of warmth replaced all the cold that surrounded her body. And reaching that small island, Mira found a basket lying on top of a blanket on the ground. Izuku. Surprise. Mira's eyes watered no words could describe the joy in her heart, and no feeling could rival the one she held in her heart at that moment it was more than she could bear. The two sat on the grass listening to the songs of the wind, the orchestra of the creatures of the forest, and the soft voice of the river banks, singing to them a loving melody it was truly Mother Nature's symphony. The two sat there for two hours in silence listening to the life of the forest. Mira. It's beautiful. Speaking in a soft voice as to not interrupt all that she had grown to enjoy. Izuku just like you. She opened her eyes slowly and looked at the boy who captured her heart, she saw him reach into the basket and pull out a small box. Izuku. Ever since coming to this world I found something Mira I found magic, adventures, but more than anything I found you. Izuku presented the box to her. Izuku. And Mira not a day goes by that I don't think of you. Opening the box earning a gasp from the girl. Izuku. Mira all I want is to protect you, and even though I could never dream of understanding what you went through watching your sister die in front of you all I ask is that you let me help heal that pain. Pairing up Mira placed a hand on her mouth. Izuku. Because Mira I swear whether I will live or die I will always protect and love you. Mira's tears finally came down, and she jumped hugging Izuku tightly. Mira. I love you too my Izu. Izuku titled her head up softly by her chin and leaned down giving her a kiss. Time skip. Izuku drove Mira back home and walked her to her door one. Mira. Izuku you don't consider yourself a member of fairy tale yet do you? Izuku. I, Mira. Why, why don't you? She asked completely confused only for Izuku to remain silent. Mira. Izuku I don't think we can be together. Izuku's eyes widened in shock what? He questioned in confusion and sadness. Mira. That's not what I meant so let's make a deal Izuku. She held his hands in her own too and spoke when you finally realize how important to us you are when you finally see that you are part of our guild, a fairy tale wizard then we can be together, Izuku looked down and smiled at her, Izuku. I'll try, Mira. Good until then. She kissed his cheek, Mira. Remember that. Izuku nodded as she walked into her house and closed the door I will try I swear Mira and with that, he went home. The magic ending to a magic night. Part 10. Izuku began to wake up from sleep groggily and looked around his house with a smile. Izuku. Today is gonna be a good day. He told himself as he jumped up and out of bed changing his clothes. Wearing his new wizard clothing with the fairy tale symbol on his back. Then get out of his house running to the guild hall however on his way he couldn't help but hear everyone talk. He must be from fairy tale. Yes he doesn't know yet. Poor guy. Izuku thoughts. What's up with these guys? Izuku looked forward it was then his eyes opened wide in horror. Izuku. What happened to the guild hall? Izuku then began to run to the guild hall. Upon arrival, he finally saw the guild hall in its wrecked state. Izuku. But who what happened? Izuku. Turning he saw Natsu, Happy, Lucy, Urza, and Grey running to him. Natsu. Who did this to our guild hall? Rage seed out of Natsu's voice as. Izuku. I don't know. It was Phantom. They all turned to see an upset Mira holding a paper bag of supplies. Izuku. Mira are you alright? Izuku asked running over to her and checking her over for any damage, but she was fine. Mira. Im find Izu. Mira then guided the group down to the basement of the fairy tale guild hall, where everyone was however unlike usual everyone was quiet and hurt not physically but emotionally, meanwhile the master was sipping beer. Jet. We've never been on the best of terms with those phantom jerks but come on, Roy. Think we should get them back, Levy. Come on you guys back off don't you think we're in enough trouble already, Lucy. Hmm. The drunk master noticed the group going towards him, Master. Yo was of kids, Lucy. Ah hi, Urza. Sorry we weren't here sooner, Natsu. Why the hell are you all sitting down here, Master? How'd it go Lucy you finished the job like a good girl, Lucy? Yeah I guess, Urza. Master do you understand the gravity of this situation, Natsu? The guild hall has been completely destroyed, Makarov. There's no need to get yourselves all worked up it's not the end of the world or anything, Natsu. What? Makarov just continued to drink while speaking just comes to show how cowardly those dunderheads in the Phantom Lord Guild can be they struck when no one was here, is that something worth bragging about? Urza. What no one was here, Mira. It was around when a few hours after I left, she said standing next to Izuku hiding a little behind him to seek comfort which got Izuku angry since they scared his mirror. Urza. At least we should be thankful for that, Makarov. 
we shouldn't trouble ourselves with people who attack when no one's around forgotten about those fools. Natsu suddenly smashed the wall ain't gonna happen, Gramps we can't just let them trash the place and get away with it. Makarov. I'm not talking about this any longer we'll handle jobs down here till the top's repaired. Natsu. We shouldn't be worrying about jobs right now. Makarov. Natsu that's enough out of you. He shouted spanking Lucy. Lucy. And you spanked me because. You're a pouting. Master hands to yourself. Izuku. Hahaha <laughs> you're adorable. Izuku said petting the now blushing Mara. Master. Tehee. He laughed jumping off his seat and walking away. Natsu. Hey where do you think you're going, old man? Makarov. Oh keep your dress up I'm going to take a leak. Natsu. I don't understand why he's being so weird about this. Izuku. It's probably because you guys are all safe I mean think about it, this is just a building fairy tale are you guys his children, so that's probably why he's not angry about this, I mean sure he's stressed out and pissed about it, but who wouldn't be when someone breaks your home, Iska. Izuku is right, but what do you mean by you guys don't you consider yourself part of the guild too, Err. Yeah Izuku what do you mean you guys, Mira. Izu, Izuku. No I don't think myself part of this guild after all this isn't my world, Lucy. Is this about what happened on the island, Izuku. No nothing with it I mean all of you have so much history together being with each other, and all but me I have none of that I'm always alone if I'm not in the guild, and let's face it, I'm basically an outcast someone who never deserved to be her. Slap. Urza slapped Izuku shocking everyone in him. Urza. Shut up you're part of this guild whether you like it or not we are your family, and this is your new world do you hear me? Izuku. I. Urza. Do you hear me Izuku Midoriya? Izuku. Yes ma'am I'm sorry. Urza. Good. Everyone was smiling at that. Iskamira Ur. Cool so can you let Izuku go now? Urza realizing that she was holding Izuku by his collar and his face was at least 5 inches from hers, blushed and released him quickly causing the entire guild to laugh. Makarov. Okay everyone tonight I want at least you all to sleep in the same room with at least 2 guild members is that understood? Build. Yes master, Iska. I call Izuku. Girls not Urza for now, new. Brought to you by happy going a bing bang boom like Elvis Presley. Iska and Izuku are both in the kitchen cooking some fried rice and chicken, honey chicken and some steak that both loved meat. Iska and Izuku were both joking around laughing and playing around as they cooked. Iska. Hey Izu. Izuku. Yeah basis. Izuku turned to Biska when she poked his nose putting some flour on it, making it seem white giggling as he tried to see it. Izuku. Oh ho let's go then. Izuku put his hand into the flower bag beside him, pulling out a white hand. Iska. No, no new. No. And Izuku put it on her face making a white handprint on her forehead to her lips. Izuku. ha. <laughs> Iska. Why you? She put her hand in her flower bag and he did the same, and they began to throw and play with the flower until they were completely white. Iska. Ha 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 whoa. She tripped on from the bag of flour on the floor and fell on Izuku who fell to the ground, as well their faces were centimeters away from each other blush on both their faces, Izuku couldn't help but be mesmerized by her beautiful eyes, meanwhile her attention was drawn to his lips, both moved forward slowly, their lips parting as they neared each other face. Iska, whisper Izuku. Izuku. Whisper Biska. Scene change. It's dark and two people are in one room. Biska is completely naked lying on the bed. She is facing Izuku who is naked on top of her. Both never looked away from the other eyes. Izuku. Whisper I'm gonna put it in. Biska simply nodded when he did a pain course through her as Isaac's hand slowly guided down her arms and intertwined with her hands while he moved forward and backward. Time skipped two hours. Both were covered with sweat as Izuku sped up a green glowed from her neck where he marked her, she could feel her magic strengthen, and the pleasure increase it was, then they both came for the last time, and stopped to sleep embracing the other. The next day in Magnolia Southgate Park brought to you by a happy blushing and looking at the two with wide wide eyes. A massive group of people is all standing in front of the massive tree in the ark, each one gasping with looks of horror when Izuku, Urza, Grey, and Natsu began to walk through them. Urza. Excuse us please we're from their guild. And what they saw when they reached the front of the group pushed them to the absolute limit of their rage. Lucy Happy Urza Grey. Gasp. Izuku Natsu. Man 1. Why are they still up there? Everyone. Whispering. Man 2. Somebody gets them down already. Man 3. Whoa do you see that mark on her? Man 4. We better not get involved. Izuku. Levy. Grey. Jet. Droy. Natsu and Izuku were shaking in rage. Natsu. Phantom Lord did those. However, when Makarov came the group began to split in half, only to reveal the master walking through them, as they murmured stopping in the front of the group, Makarov's rage had reached the crossing point. Urza. Master. Makarov. I can handle our guild hall being reduced to rebel. Makarov. But I will not let harm come to my children without taking revenge. He shouted shattering his staff scaring Lucy. Makarov. We have no choice but to go to war. In Magnolia Hospital, Izuku can be seen seated beside Levi who is patched up along with Jed and Droy, each lying under blankets. Izuku. 
I'm sorry jet droy but most of all levy well you were getting hurt I was, I was god damn it. Izuku shouted punching the wall using no magic at all shattering it, but bleeding. Flashback. Izuku is sitting in front of Mira at the bar trying to read a flyer but couldn't. Izuku. Hey Mira how do you read this? Mira. Hmm oh well this as help needed a clover mountain so wild wyvern is destroying villages for 90,000 jewels. Izuku. Oh I knew that. Mira. You need help don't you? Izuku. Desperately. A depressed aura surrounded the and I'm crying chibi Izuku. Mira. Oh I know in the library Levy should be there since she is the only one who likes to read I'm sure she can teach you. Izuku. Thank you Mira. Izuku said hugging her with an I'm tears in chibi form and then running all the way to the library as she giggled. When Izuku entered the library he found a girl wearing a blue vest, yellow bra, white shorts, brown belt, brown sandals, and a yellow bow with brown dots in her beautiful blue hair. Sitting on a table with a mountain of books reading with red glasses reading page to page in seconds. Izuku. Um excuse me. Levi ignored him. Izuku. Um excuse me. Izuku said tapping her shoulder when she turned to him. Levi. Oh sorry wait you're the new member Izuku how can I help you? Izuku. Um well I'm new to this world and I don't know how to read and write, so I was wondering if you could teach me. Levi. Oh sure. And with that, the two began to work together and find out new things about each other, like Isaac's love for reading and Levi's love of magic enchantments, it wasn't long before they became the best of friends. Flashback end. Izuku. I will make them pay I swear it, Levi. Isaacus bangs covered his face as he stood up and walked out. In Oak Town, within the Phantom Lord Guild Hall, everyone is laughing at what Gajil had done to the fairy tale members, while well, a single team was heading out to do the same that is till they reached the door which exploded sending them flying and smashing into the sign on the second floor, emerging from the smoke of the explosion, was a pissed off Natsu in front of a pissed off fairy tale. Makarov. Fairy tale has come calling. Phantom Lord Guild. Gry I I I. Izuku. D E. Phantom Lord. I, I, I. Another group of the Phantom Lord Guild attacked Natsu who sent them all flying with fire. Natsu. Alright who wants to play with fire. Fairy tail. Let's get them. The entire guild went into an all-out attack, slashing and sending the Phantom Lord members flying Macau and Wakaba, using the purple net and smoke punches, Alzac using his spark shot, Biska with her homing shot, and Makarov growing into a giant smashing them into the ground. Makarov. You dared to believe that you could lay your filthy hands on this monster's children and get away with it. The entire guild was made of monsters destroying the evil guild. Makarov. Where is Ose? Izuku. Tell me where is Gajiel and the Element 4. Meanwhile above them all stood Gajiel smiling at them. Gajiel. Looks like Laxus and Mystigan were too scared to play not that I care, master, Ose knew exactly how this would go down, but for scum, they seem like decent fighters. The guild tried to resist fairy tail using fire magic, only to find out Natsu could eat fire. Izuku. Detroit. Smash. Phantom Lord. Jai I I. Makarov. Urza I leave the rest to you. Urza. Yes master. And with that, the old man left that was when Gajil jumped into the action. Man 1. Woes that. Man 2. That's gotta be. Urza. Black Steel Gajil. Man 3. You attacked Levy. The man ran at Gajil only to have a metal club smash into his face, sending him flying G, but also Gajil's own guildmates. Gajil. Show me what you got unless you're too scared to face the Iron Dragon Slayer. Elfman. Too scared real man has no fear. He shouted charging Gajil turning his fist into a stone golem's arm, punching Gajil who blocked and attacked with his own iron club foot. Gajil. You're strong. Elfman. Cause him a real man. Gajil. Oh really check this out. Gajil fired several poles from his metal club foot, attacking his own guild, distracting Elfman only for Gajil to send him flying. However, before Elfman could hit the ground Izuku caught him. Izuku. Leave him to me Elfman. Elfman. Right Izuku. Gajil. Oh what can you do fairy kin. However, before he could finish Izuku sent him flying through the wooden bar. Izuku. It's nice to see that you know me but, Izuku. It won't stop me from tearing you limb from limb. Agil. Oh really iron dragon club. Only for Izuku to catch it with one hand. Izuku. You attacked Roy and Jet, but more than anything you hurt Levi you destroyed our guild hall I'll make you page I I I. Izuku threw him to the roof only for Gajil to land and jump back at him. Izuku. St. Louis smash. Sending Gajil flying into a wall Izuku began to slowly walk towards him. MAN 1. Gajil was sent flying. MAN 2. No one did that before. Izuku. I'll make you feel every bit of my hatred. Izuku began to walk towards Gajil with an aura that only described death with his eyes temporarily turning red. Gajil could only feel one thing from Izuku pure unadulterated rage. Izuku. You thought you could attack my best friend and escape my wrath. That was when Makarov crashed into the ground. Izuku. Master. Izuku and the rest of the fairy tale ran to Makarov, while Gajil jumped away as they checked on the old man Phantom Lord decided to take advantage and go to attack them, however the fairy tailers held on. One guy sneak attacked Kana. Wakaba. Kana. Hana. 
Oh no ai ah. However, the explosion was blocked by Izuku holding a shield. Izuku. You okay Kana? Kana nodded with a small blush as he helped her out. Izuku. We need to leave come on. Perry Taylor 1. What no we can. Izuku. I said now. The entire guild followed Izuku and ran out carrying the master was Elfman. Part 11. The entire guild rested in the basement of the one standing fairy tale guild hall Makarov was placed with his old friend Pryusika. Lucy told everyone about why the Phantom Lord guild was after her and Izuku he was busy having a bath in the male bathrooms. Meanwhile Urza was having a bath in the female bathrooms. Mira had begged Laxus to help the guild in their fight, meanwhile Kana was searching all over for Mystigan, but Izuku. Izuku's hair was down and covering his eyes, while the back of his hair reached the bottom of his neck. Izuku thoughts. Damn it. He punched the wall as the water dripped down from his fists. Izuku thoughts. Why am I so so weak? Why can't I protect the ones I love? Why can't I protect anyone? Am I so useless that I can't do anything, even with the power of heroes from different universes? Izuku looked up why did you bring me here Grandpa Izuku thought with tears in his eyes. Izuku. I can't even access my true power the full body overtaker, I'm nothing I'm no hero not even close. Flashback, Izuku's Grandpa. Listen here my boy there will be a time where you're faced with a challenge that you can't defeat a time where all hope is lost and everything you love is taken away from you. Izuku really grandpa, Isaacus grandpa. Yes but at that moment a power will emerge from within you a power to save the ones you love the power to change the world Izuku this power is in your emotions, find it and set it free after all that is why you will become the greatest hero of them all. Izuku. I will unlock that power gramps I swear. Flashback end. Izuku. I'm lost without you grandpa help me please. Izuku pleaded pushing his head against the wall of the shower, clenching his fist. Uam, rumble, rumble. The entire guild ran outside to see the Phantom Lord headquarters with enormous iron legs walking towards them and stopping when it reached the center of the lake. Natsu. What is that thing? Happy? It's a guild hall with enormous legs. Loke. Is it Phantom? Some members of Fairy Tail whimpered in fear. Bukaba. How do we fight that thing? Urza. I never anticipated this why to go to such extremes to attack us. Mira was trembling with a hand over her mouth, and so was Lucy. Oze. Engage the Jupiter cannon. The Phantom Lord mages began to charge the massive cannon Jupiter, with magic about to fire at the guild, when Urza charged forward. Mira. Urza. Bray. Don't be stupid. Izuku. Don't do it Urza. Urza required her adamantium armor. Hana. She requited. Loke. What are you doing? Urza. Protecting the guild hall. Happy. That's her adamantium armor. Iska. Is she trying to block it, Elzak? But there's no way her armor's gonna hold up against a blast that strong. Bukaba. You're just risking your life don't be ridiculous. Urza. Stay back. Natsu. Urza. The guild looked at her in horror. Ray. You're not gonna be able to stop her you gotta have faith in her. The cannon fired at Urza who activated her shield to block it. Her armor began to shatter slowly. Natsu. No. The guild all covered her heads from the light of the cannon, all afraid for their friend, meanwhile Izuku could only stare and feel useless, that's when a voice came to his head. This Oze is a scumbag and this girl you feel for her right. Izuku. Who are you? That doesn't matter how I see you as worthy I'll give you the ability to use one for all at full power for 10 seconds to protect your friends no go. Izuku. One for all 1000%%. Purple grew on Izuku's arms and his hair went Vegeta style. Now call out it out. Izuku low voice shield of the night. And with that, the shield dispersed turning into dust as Isaacus' form vanished, and Urza alongside him fell to the ground. Natsu. Urza. Mira. Izuku. The two ran and checked up on both as Oze spoke with glee over the speaker. Oze. Makarov has fallen and your precious Urza, as well as the hero king Izuku, have both been taken down any chance of victory, has slipped from your fingers hand over Lucy Hertfilia and surrender. Elzak. That's not gonna happen. Iska. Yeah like any guild would hand over one of their own to a monster like you. Macau. Yeah you hear that Lucy staying put. Oze was getting pissed off. I won't ask again. The entire fairy tale guild however refused and kept shouting it to him while Lucy cried. Lucy thoughts. Maybe I should just go with them give myself up. Urza. We would never betray her like that you'd have to kill us first. Lucy. Gasp. Fairy tale. Yeah. Izuku. You're nothing but a scumbag Lucy belongs here with us we'll never let you take her even if we have to die to do so. Fairy tale. Yeah, Natsu. You can stop asking now cause you're gonna get the same answer we're taking every one of you jerks down. The crowd supported Izuku, Urza, Natsu, while Lucy cried in the background from happiness, meanwhile Oze got pissed beyond relief. Oze. If death is what you want then I'll give you a second helping of Jupiter, you've got 15 minutes to ponder the folly of your actions. Elfman. No way. Hana. What do we do? Loke. They're gonna fire at us again. Urza tried to get up and so did Izuku, but both fell to the ground. Mira. Izuku, Urza, Ray. Oh no they're out there the only reason we're still standing after the first shot. Izuku. 
Not yet. Shocking everyone Izuku was clutching his fist with an angry look on his face. Pushing himself he stood up. Izuku. I won't stop until Phantom Lord's defeated. Phantom Lord suddenly sent Phantom troops at Fairy Tail and also threatening them with the Jupiter Cannon Natsu, then decided he would destroy the cannon and flew with Happy. Izuku. Mira take care of Lucy, Ur take care of Urza, Kana I leave command here to you, Grey, Elfman come with me, Grey Elfman Mira or Kana. Right. Grey built an ice ramp for both Izuku, Elfman, and Grey to get up there. Izuku Grey and Elfman felt an earthquake and saw a flame that looked awfully like Natsus, and they ran to him, only to find a phantom mage about to attack him, when the giant guild began to turn into a giant robot, causing Natsu to get sick and fall to the ground however before the phantom guild member could do anything Izuku swept the guy's leg, Grey froze him, and Elfman punched him so hard he sent the guy flying. Natsu. Thanks guys. Happy. You three are so cool you showed that phantom goon who's boss. Grey. What's your deal Natsu that was just sad? Elfman. If you were a real man you'd make the giant motion sick of you. Izuku. Now you two Natsu destroyed the cannon good work. Natsu high five Izuku both with smiles on their faces. Natsu. Ha huh, it must have stopped moving cause I'm feeling better now. Happy. I I'm gonna go see what's going on. The giant stopped moving however its arm was creating a magic circle of an abyss break so big it would destroy the whole town. Happy. We're doomed. Natsu. What do we do we got to stop them. Bray. I guess we should split up and start looking for the power source of this thing right? Elfman. Man are we ever gonna catch a break? Izuku. Okay Elfman you go left wing, Natsu, Grey, and happy you guys up, and I will go to the right wing. Grey Natsu. I got to work with him. Izuku. Yes, now go. Izuku said with a glare scaring the two and causing them to run. Izuku. Elfman be careful. Elfman. You too big bro I mean Izuku. Izuku. What did you say? Elfman. Nothing by. Izuku walked the other way, but stopped hey Elfman Elfman turned to see Izuku with a smile, stay safe little bro, and with that Izuku disappeared, well Elfman smiled right he shouted going as well. But Izuku. Izuku popped his head out of a window only to see rain. Izuku. That's weird when did it start raining. Drip, drip drop. Izuku turned to see a woman in a blue dress with brown stockings and a Russian hat walking towards him holding a pink umbrella. Hello my name is Juvia, and I am the rain woman of the element for drip, drip drop. Izuku. So I take it you're one of them then bring it on, Juvia. I must say I'm impressed your guild managed to take down two of the elements, however you must not underestimate the remaining two. Izuku's face was emotionless, but also pissed his eyes were simply dark green outlining black. Izuku. Listen Miss Juvia I won't hold back just because you're a chick. They never blinked not once, and then a blush formed on Juvia's face as she began to walk away. Juvia. Well then, I give up you win goodbye. Izuku. Where you going come back and tell me how to stop the giant. Izuku screamed running after her. Juvia. I have the strong urge to make him mine that's it I can't help myself anymore waterlock. Izuku. Arg. Juvia finally noticed Izuku's bruise and started freaking out. Juvia. Oh no I didn't know about his wound what do I do I guess I should probably release him. Izuku. One for all 20%. Izuku spun in the water as his lightning formed a single tornado bursting the bubble. Izuku. Greya. Izuku burst out of the water and landed on the ground. Juvia. He must have lightning magic it's so beautiful I'm water and he's lightning were too far apart but so close together like thunder this must be fate I can't believe I've found my handsome prince. Izuku. You almost got me with that sneak attack you're playing dirty. Izuku said as he pushed his hair up from over his left eye and then he began removing his shirt causing Juvia's heart to beat harder. Juvia's thoughts. He's taking off his clothes but we've only just met can't we take things slowly. Izuku. I really don't want to hurt you Juvia however I will if I have to, so I ask you to surrender cause this'll hurt smash. However, the air pressure went through her shocking Izuku. Juvia. My body is made of water drip drop yes, I mustn't forget my love is my enemy, so I have no choice but to attack, it seems this is farewell my prince water slicer. Juvia. Given the proper force water is strong enough to cut through still take it for granted and you'll find yourself in a world of hurt. Izuku. GRRR, 30% Detroit smash. The massive amount of air pressure thankfully pushed Juvia back smashing her into the building behind, but she ended up coming back uninjured. Juvia. Can't you see you're wasting your time all your attacks go through me drip drip drop. Izuku. Now what do I do? Juvia. There is no way for you to win so just hand over Lucy Hurtfilia and I'll ask our master to spare your guild. Izuku. Oh come on don't give me that you and I both know we're past the point of no return, and besides Lucy's one of us, I'd rather give my life than hand her over to you. Juvia dropped her umbrella. Juvia mind. He'd give his life for her, he'd give his life for her, give his life, Lucy's my rival, Lucy's my rival, he loves her. Juvia. Oh the pain oh why fate must you be so cruel. Izuku. Hey you okay what's wrong? Juvia. She's not worthy of my prince. Juvia. 
Lucy Hertfilia cannot be allowed to live. Yuvia fired boiling water after boiling water at Izuku who tried to dodge, but it kept hitting him, so he decided to end it all there. Izuku. Forgive me Juvia. Juvia. I I I. Izuku. One for all 100% Texas smash. Juvia. I I. Juvia was sent flying through 10 roofs and then down the guild hall completely wounded and covered with scratches she had given up and let herself fall. But Izuku didn't he jump down after the girl and grabbed her hand holding onto the roof. Juvia. Why are you helping me tell me I'm all alone I have no one what's the point of living? Izuku. Then live for me. Juvia. Gasp. Izuku. I won't leave you when you need me beside I love the rain it's so beautiful and so are you why would I let you die when I could save you? Juvia. Do you mean it? Izuku. Of course oh please don't die not like them. Juvia felt a drop of water hit her head, noticing it was warm she looked up only to see Izuku crying. Izuku. I can't see another person die not again. Izuku pulled her up and laid her down on the root he sat beside her and petted her head. Izuku. Rest up Juvia you'll need it. Juvia lost it and fainted in happiness. Elf man. Izuku knew that voice. Izuku. Mira. Betting up Izuku immediately dashed all the way to Mira, seeing her stuck between the fingers of the robot and the giant monster in front of her Izuku charged forward to protect her. Once Izuku got in front of Mira he pushed the fingers apart and hugged her. Izuku. What were you thinking? Crying Mira. Sniff Izuku please sniff help Elfman. Izuku. Where is he? Mira pointed at the monster. Izuku. Okay Mira I will do it for you and Elfman. Izuku held Mira bridal style and jumped inside the giant robot he then placed her on a rock and walked towards the monster. Izuku. Hey Elfman over here. The monster turned to see Izuku and charged at him at full speed. Izuku. That's enough Elfman. Izuku smash sent the massive monster flying to the end of the hallway where it crashed into the wall, shocking Mira. Izuku then sighed releasing a breath of air however due to the amount of power his body was giving off at 100%, the air came out like Shoto's cool air Elfman's monster body began to crack until it completely broke, causing Elfman's human body to fall onto the ground. Izuku. Are you alright Elfman? Izuku said as he let go of his 100% and hit his internally bleeding hand when Mira ran to the two. Mira. Are you alright Elfman? Elfman. Mira I'm sorry I tried to control it to protect you, but I couldn't do it and I nearly killed Izuku. Mira. Elfman. Elfman. But what could I do I was scared I wanted to I just wanted to. Izuku brought Elfman and Mira into a hug, earning gasps from the two. It's okay it's all okay now. Mira and Elfman had tears in their eyes. Izuku. Let me take that burden and hold it with you share your tears with me, cause I'm always there when you need me to be, I promise to cry come on go ahead. The two gripped Izuku's shirt tightly and cried into him. Part 12. After Mira and Elfman settled down Izuku guided them up the giant to where Ose should be on their way. Mira discussed element 4 of the Phantom Lord and how Ari of the Wind was the strongest and that they should defeat him before he opens his eyes, so speeding up until they passed hall to hall when the building started to shake. Izuku. What's going on? Elfman. It's probably Natsu. Izuku. He must have defeated the last one, Mira. Yes we did it we stopped the abyss break spell from being cast, Elfman. Cause we're awesome, Izuku. Ha you know it, Mira. All the members of the Element 4 have been defeated. The entire guild began to celebrate their victory that is till Oze decided to share something with everyone, Oze. Attention all fairy tailors, Izuku. What's going on, Oze. Cause I'll only say this once. Suddenly a scream was heard over the mic, Izuku. That scream, Mira. It can't be, Elfman. It's Lucy, Mira. But how did he find her? Izuku snarled in anger. Oze. Eh? And that's our first objective complete now the final thing my favorite wiping all you miserable brats off the face of the earth. Izuku. That's bastard come on we need to find Natsu and Grey. The other two nodded and ran behind Izuku when they reached a room and found Urza lying against a pillar, Grey on the floor asleep with Arya a few meters away. Mira. Urza. Izuku. Grey are you alright? The two looked at the group in shock. Urza. It's you. Izuku. Looks like something big went down here, Urza. It's you, Izuku. You're injured how many times do I have to tell you? Izuku walked to her and crouched in front of Urza, placing his hand on her head and petting it, Izuku. You don't need to fight alone because we're all here for you Urza and we always will be. Urza looked at Izuku in shock, never once has anyone asked to help her to be with her, always to never leave her, since she was always the strongest she was always needed, never once did she need someone or ask if she did, Urza. Okay Izuku thank you, she said with a smile causing the others to smile back at her as well, and then suddenly a feeling of dread coursed through everyone, Ray. What the, Mira? What is it, Urza? I sense death, Izuku. I can't even stand still, Izuku said shaking from the disgusting feeling, Ray. I don't like this feeling, Elfman. Ugh I'm super manly and I'm still getting the chills, Mira. Whatever it is it's pure evil, clap, clap, pap, clap, Oze. 
Bravo you are all quite keen very impressive fairy tale wizards I knew this would be fun, but never in my wildest dreams did I think it would be this entertaining you disposed of the Jupiter cannon, defeated my element 4, and you even managed to bring my giant to its knees, Urza. Master Ose, Elfman. This creeps the leader of the Phantom Lord's guild, Mira. It's like there's a black cloud hanging over him it's making me feel sick, Ose. Thank you you've been so kind to entertain me I simply must return the favor, Bray. You ready, Elfman? You bet, Ose. I'll return it in full. Bray and Elfman charged at Ose jumping into the air about to attack when, Urza. No don't do it, Ose. How absurd, Mira. Elfman, Grey. Mira turned to Ose with a snarl as he swiped his hand causing an explosion. However, Izuku took the blast protecting the girls, but considerable damage was still done to them. Izuku. Ai erg. Urza charged forward drawing out her sword, but Ose sent a tornado of darkness at her causing explosions, however she slashed through them and to Ose jumping into the air and requiring into her black wing armor. Urza. Hey she screamed slashing down from then jump only for Ose to jump back dodging the slash, but Urza went again for a vertical slash to the head, only for Ose to grab her wrist and crack a smile on his face as she gasped when Ose spun her around and threw her away, but Urza backflip landing on her feet. The silhouette of a man appeared behind Ose smashing down into the ground when Ose vanished, and it was Izuku in his 20% full cowling, lifting his hand from the ground Izuku got kicked by Ose, who appeared at Izuku's side and smashed his leg into the boy's chest, sending him flying towards Urza, but using his fingers and stabbing them into the ground, Izuku slowed down. Ose. Fascinating you two took a shot from Jupiter at full force did you not? And yet you're still standing, Urza Izuku. It's because of our friends, Urza. We will withstand any physical pain to protect the ones that we love. Ose got a mad grin on his face how amusing powerful, courageous, and exquisitely beautiful alongside a strong, compassionate kind young hero, destroying you too will bring me unbelievable pleasure. Suddenly the entire guild began to shatter and pieces fell from the roof near the three. Ose. My what an unruly dragon you have, Izuku. Inhale exhale he may be unruly, but he's also an extremely powerful wizard in fact I'd say he's just as strong as I am actually maybe even stronger. Izuku and Urza smiled at each other as they readied their weapon and fist. Ose. There is no need to be so modest Reiko Izuku and Titania Urza, both your magics are as spectacular as the salamanders if not more, so you two are the first wizards able to last this long against me in battle truth be told, we three would be more equally matched in power, if you two didn't stop my Jupiter cannon, you know what really irks me about fairy tale, the fact that there are so many powerful wizards in there like yourselves who are aligned with Makarov, flicking his finger an invisible force and Urza smashing into the wall, Izuku. Urz Ughh. Ose teleported in front of Midoriya, smashing his fist into the boy's gut sending him to the roof and crashing back down onto the ground, Ose. Since you two can't be tempted to join Phantom there's only one way to change that, he said before firing purple bullets from his fingers at Izku and Urza causing explosions as they both jumped high into the air to dodge, Ose kill you, he then began to fire more and more beams at the two who continued to dodge his blasts, Ose That'll send the old coot into deep despair, and from there I will come and kill him, Izuku. Shut up. Izuku came down smashing his fist where Ose was but disappeared and reappeared behind them, Ose. For as long as I can remember the Phantom Lord Guild has always been at the top, we have the strongest wizards with the strongest spells and more members than any other guild, however recently Fairy Tail has been rising through the ranks, and our position as leaders is in jeopardy stories about Urza, Laxus, Mystigan, and Izuku spread throughout the kingdom, and stories like the Hero King spread like wildfire now Phantom Lord and Fairy Tail are considered on par with each other, the top two guilds representing the kingdom ha, huh? the thought disgust me I refuse to be acquainted with such a feeble guild, then Urza attacked silence she screamed as she attacked him only for Ose to appear and vanish again. Izuku so we're fighting for our lives because of your jealousy, Ose. Jealousy ha that's absurd we simply wanted to prove to the kingdom that we are the dominant guild, Urza. How could you end for such a petty reason? Both she and Izuku jumped and began slashing and punching him both perfectly in sync, meanwhile Ose used his speed to appear and vanish again and again dodging their attacks. Izuku. Hey Ose. HMM hi, suddenly Izuku saw an opening and sent a mighty punch at him, but it missed however the air pressure from it ended up cutting the bastard's chest and letting his blood spew out on Isaac's face pissing off the guildmaster who sent ghost-like creatures out of his arm and wrapped them around the two, and when it tightened Izuku and Urza were electrified, Izuku Urza. Ai ah, Oze. You little green-haired bastard, he sent his most powerful voltage at Izuku who screamed in complete agony, Oze. Ha 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 what was it you promised to protect and help them oh really well don't make promises you can't keep now de. Urza. Izuku knew. Izuku. 
AI or Urza. She could only look at him with tears as he smiled his signature smiled, and then they were both covered by the red lightning. As the lightning vanished Izuku was completely fried and still smoking, then Oze dropped him onto the ground while Urza cried. Urza? I'll kill you, you bastard. She screamed struggling to free herself only to be electrocuted as well. Oze? Hahaha <laughs> do you seriously think this was all for some man who offered us money for his daughter? Oh no, this was to get revenge for all the times people saw us as equals. I will make you all pay, but slowly first I will slaughter all the males of your guild, and then ha 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 All this for that all because you're jealous. Those a. No and it's not my fault so don't been try it, little girl. Crack. The two turned only to see Izuku standing behind them, and then here he appeared in front of Oze catching him before he could move to shock them was the green lightning pulsing around Izuku. Oze. How? Izuku. Got you now there is nowhere to go Oze. Oze. Oh really and what are you gonna do to me with your puny weak arms? Izuku. It's not about whether or not I can do it. The entire fairy tale were watching Izuku and Oze fight because he was broadcasting their torture, and as Izuku spoke everyone began to listen. Izuku. It's a hero's job to risk their life to make their promises into a reality. Oze. What? Izuku. One for all 100%. Oze. Wait there's something different about him. Izuku. Detroit. Smyish. Oze was sent through the entire guild and into the water, causing a massive wave to surround the entire guild shocking everyone. As the smoke cleared everyone could see Urza and Mira wake simply staring at Izuku. Urza. Izuku thank god you're okay she then noticed his arm your arm. Izuku. It's alright I'm just glad you're alright. He said with a smile suddenly something crashed from the sky with ghost-like monsters surrounding it. Izuku. There's no way. Standing there was Oze with a massive smirk and black eyes staring at Izuku who could barely move. Oze. I must admit brat you have the power you even made me go serious so as a reward, I'll make you wish for death dead wave. Izuku. Ayah. As the smoke cleared everyone went wide eye in horror Izuku was laying on a wall with a piece of metal impaling his side. Oze. D.A.E. Izuku. Ayah. Izuku could be seen lying on the floor as Oze began to beat him up and use all sorts of spells on him. Urza. Stop. Mira. Leave him alone. Elfman. Get away from H.M. Oze. Ahahahaha <laughs> can you hear them little hero each one cares about you, but they all are too afraid to touch me now, then be a good boy and scream for me would you? Izuku. Ai erg. Izuku laid there on the ground looking at Urza and Oze who was laughing with complete glee. Oze. You are nothing you will always be nothing and that will never change. Izuku didn't move he wasn't there anymore. Urza. Izuku don't go wake up. Mira's eyes widened and zoomed in, it seemed as if her heart had stopped, Elfman and Grey had similar reactions reaching out for their friend, but nothing came from it, that's when everyone noticed Natsu and Lucy looking at them with tears as well as happy. Natsu. Hey Izuku wake up come on man. But Izuku's body didn't move Natsu charged forward, only to be held down by Lucy. Natsu. Let go of me Izuku wake up Izuku come on please wake you ppp. The entire guild was left in tears, but they broke out of their grief by Oze's laughing. Oze. Hahahaha <laughs> you all relied on that hero didn't you oh this is extraordinary, but have no fear I will not kill you all no, I will make all of you watch as I take the girls of your guild away from you. The girls looked in terror at the sick man. Bray. You bastard. Oze. a. Ahaha I'll make them cry. Oze. a. I'll torture them. Oze. a. And when I'm done I'll kill the. Suddenly Oze a was sent flying into a wall, shocking everyone Izuku was standing there breathing heavily with blood covering his entire body. Oze. a. Aya. He screeched as he continued to dig into the wall the stones clawing at his back. Oze. You brat why won't you just die already? Izuku. Because I promised I would win because it's a hero's job to protect everyone. The entire guild looked at Izuku in awe as he stood forward clutching his fist to fight Oze. Izuku. I will hold him off Elfman. Natsu you the only ones who can stand right now take everyone out of here. Natsu. What no way I am staying and healthy. Izuku. Natsu. Izuku stayed looking forward as Natsu seemed to look like he was about to speak back, but something told him not to. Oze. So you will hold me back will you? Izuku. It's a hero's job to stand up and fight the injustices of the world. Memories began to flow into Izuku's mind. Izuku. And I will always protect those who need protecting. Izuku's body began to give off the same green lightning. Izuku. Now come Oze. Oze. D e ghoul devouring. Oze jumped high into the air and came striking down his entire body became covered in his purple ghouls as he strikes Izuku. Izuku. One for all 100% smash. Oze. What's wrong that was weaker than before? Izuku. Fine it's fine I will no let him past me so run run. Elfman and Natsu looked in fear and tears before they picked up the others and ran with them telling the two to put them down while crying. Oze. Hahahaha <laughs> man you're the best destroying you will give me unbelievable pleasure. Izuku. Shut up. Urza and Mira looked back at Izuku who was loosing. Urza. Why? Oze. Now show me your blood. Izuku's grandpa's voice. 
Not just anyone can be called a hero, it isn't the kind of title you can earn simply cause you brandish a sword or carries a shield, and it's got nothing to do with magic or strength. A Zuku hero is someone who is willing to risk his life for the sake of the ones he loves, you may take a few bumps along the way, but don't lose heart boy the victor will always rise up from amongst the rubble, hold on tight to your wish cry out with all your desire, because that's what makes a hero shine the brightest. Those A finally smashed Izuku into the ground the air pressure of the impact shook the entire robotic guild and caused a massive wave. Those A. He he ha 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 you're dead nothing absolutely nothing I can't wait to see. A sword flew and the hilt hit Oze's head. Urza. Get off of him. Izuku. Urza. He thought to himself waking up. Mira. Leave him alone Izuku please don't die I am begging you. Izuku thoughts. Mira. Mira. You promised to share my pain don't you dare break it. Izuku thoughts. I can't lose. Those A. Shut up just wait okay okay then I'll come for all of you and give you to my wizard so they can pleasure themselves. That's when it happened lightning began to generate around Oze again, and suddenly Oze began to be lifted off the ground, there was Izuku his fist on Oze's stomach pushing him up. Izuku. I will never let you touch them gry i ah. Those A was sent through several walls and into the lake beneath the guild, everyone was left in shock, but what shocked them, even more, was the lightning surrounding Izuku who vanished only to reveal a single green glowing figure this was Deku 100%, one for all full lightning mode, and nothing could stop him, part 13, Izuku full lightning disappeared in a lightning bolt and appeared in front of Ose, who splashed out the water in full rage, his right eye went back to white, but was completely red with blood coming down like a waterfall from his head, Those A. I won't lose not to you. He shouted activating his black eyes again. Izuku. Greyaya. Oze. A. Enough. The ghost-like figures wrapped around Izuku only for Oze A to smile in glee that is till Izuku destroyed them and vanished then reappear under Oze A just to uppercut him with a lightning fist, sending Oze A flying, and then Izuku punched him again only with a thunder fist. Oze A drifted on the seafloor and then bounced from the water and slam into the mountain behind him shattering it. Those A looked up only to see the green Izuku walking towards him, but this time something was different the floor beneath him began to shatter, as well as everything around him and a yellow glow surrounded the boy. Izuku spoke, but his voice sounded as if it was a vibration, you have been judged Oze, and now you will pay raising his hand into the air Izuku finished Oze. As the attack ended the entire guild was left wide eye looking at Izuku, who was simply standing in front of a white shaking Oze. Izuku walked towards his guild members who remained silent and stopped arriving in front of Urza, who was simply smiling sadly sadly at him, she placed her hand on his face, as arcs connected both her hand to his cheek, and then she placed her other hand on the opposite cheek, and brought his head into the crook of her neck, Urza. Thank you Izuku you've done enough. Izuku's body began to crack when it shattered a perfectly fine and unconscious Izuku who was breathing softly, Urza. Fairy tale. Everyone looked to Urza. We won. She shouted out as they all broke into a cheer, and when the master came everyone's cheers got louder. Part 14. In the Magic Council. After the Battle of Fairy Tail and the Phantom Lord Guildmaster Makarov and Izuku were put on a trial Izuku for defeating Oze, and how there were no records of him, well Makarov for the damage the two guilds caused. Thankfully they were not charged for the damage since Phantom Lord provoked the guild, and several eyewitnesses confirmed that while every member of the Fairy Tail Guild was put into questioning for all that happened and what role they played in the battle. Now in front of the Ten Wizard Saints, Izuku and Makarov are asleep. Random. Um Master Makarov, Sir Izuku. Izuku Makarov. UHH here. Random. Court is in session and we have a very strict policy of no sleeping while on the stand. Izuku Makarov. UHH. Sorry hehehehe. <laughs> they laughed while rubbing the back of their heads. Meanwhile the council were all snarling at Izuku and Makarov as Sagrain. And Altier chuckled at the two. Phantom Lord was disbanded and Oze was arrested for the crimes that he committed. And after Makarov exited the room the council began to talk with Izuku. Org. So Mr. Izuku you single-handedly defeated Oze Wizard Saint when you've only been part of the Fairy Tail Guild Hall for three weeks am I right? Izuku? Yes sir. Ijima. May I ask Midoriya what was it that pushed you to overcome such limits, because checking the reports from the hospital you were put in, they say that somehow your magic reserves were forcefully expanded, allowing you to defeat Oze, but the cause of such an exponential feat was a strong emotion please tell me. Izuku? Of course sir it was because he threatened to grape the girls of our guild. Nicolo. So it was a simple jealousy, Izuku. Hehe <laughs> no not jealousy, Izuku looked up with crimson eyes shocking them, Izuku. It was pure inhuman rage and a strong sense of justice, Seagrain. Interesting so your desire to protect them pushed you to such extremes, you truly earned your title as king of the heroes, Izuku. Thank you for the compliment, Izuku said rubbing the back of his head, Ultir. And you're very handsome at that, Izuku. You're too kind for someone with such angelic looks, Ultir blushed. Fufufu quite the sweet talker isn't you, Izuku. Haha, <laughs> slam, org. 
enough tell me what was that green lightning there was no magic energy in your attack and yet lightning came, but it also sent Oze a wizard scene through the floors and into the ocean from 200 feet, and if that's not all you completely destroyed within 204 meters of the land around you, Izuku. Sorry can't say cause I don't know. Izuku looked down at his fist and clutched it somehow he used one, but it was completely different he was made of his green arcs and didn't destroy his body. The council glared at Izuku who simply looked down. Altier. How about I guide you out? Izuku. Thank you. Nicolo. We're not done here he still needs to. Izuku turned with a blood chilling glare, shut up he said with venom causing the rest of the council to shake while Altier guided him out. Outside, Izuku stood face to face with Altier thank you for guiding me out, I suppose this is goodbye Miss Altier. Altier. I guess so but before you leave. Izuku. Ye. However, Altier shut him up by kissing his lips, little did Izuku know she was searching his memories until she was forced out, and Izuku whispered into her ear. Izuku. For a beautiful girl you really do play dirty. She blushed bright red as she seductively smiled and walked away waving. Altier. Izuku Midoriya huh. She put her fingers on her lips as she smiled while he walked away. Altier. I can't wait to see you again my hero king. In the fairy tale guild hall the next day. Burahin. Listen up everyone we're taking on job requests again starting today you'll have to excuse the mess from construction, but at least you can still work. Everyone? Yeah. Lucy. What's up with the most of the time these guys would be loafing around the guild hall? Ask Lucy who was sitting in front of Mira at the quick make bar. Mira. Laugh. Lucy. I don't suppose you've seen Loke have you? Mira stopped laughing and smiled seductively with a blush staring at Izuku who walked to them and sat down for a drink. Mira. Izu. She screamed jumping and hugging him as he laughed and seated her on his lap. Izuku. What's going on with Lucy? Mira. She's asking about Loke. Izuku. Oh don't tell me you've fallen for the guild's playboy. Lucy. No no apparently he's the one who got back my keys I just wanted to thank him. Mira. Oh sure I'll tell him if I see him. Izuku. Yep you can count on me just don't hold your hopes up or Mira she's an airhead. Mira. Why you take it back? Izuku. See airhead. Lucy giggled at the two as they smiled back at her chucking a bit. Mira. So were you spirits made at you, you know for dropping your keys. Lucy. I guess you could say that and there was this one spirit who was especially pissed about me dropping her key. Lucy said remembering the living nightmare known as Aquarius. Lucy. Ugh just thinking about it makes my butt sting. Bray who was behind Lucy released cold air from his hand, I can cool it for you. Lucy. That sounds like Hexwell harassment to me. Happy. Lucy can you show me how red your butt is? Lucy. And that's just crossing the line. Natsu whispering to Izuku and Happy. How do you think she'll react if I make her butt sting even more? Izuku whispering back. Hmm good idea I'll make some a dry ice hand and we'll see. Happy. Giggle. Lucy. Who are you the devil? Suddenly a barrel came and crashed into Natsu attracting their attention to Urza. Urza. Why don't you tell everyone else how you feel? Laxus was seated in front of Urza as she clenched her fist. Laxus. I have no problem telling M what I think of M this guild's filled with nothing but weaklings, especially the two of you morons you were basically phantoms punching bags you know I'm glad I never got to know your names. He said looking back at the injured Jed and Droy who looked down this guy's was getting on Isaac's last nerve. Laxus. Which brings me back to the worst of them all the rich little princess wannabe wizard this was your fault. Mira. Laxus would you shut up? The master said that no one would be held accountable for what happened not even you despite the fact that I begged you to help and you turn your back on us. Mira begged him to help that finally snapped Izuku. Laxus. Quit your whining this had nothing to do with me and if I had been there then you wouldn't be drowning your sorrows in this rubble right now. Natsu. I've heard enough out of you. Laxus came back behind Natsu earning a gasp from Lucy however before Natsu could fall Izuku caught him while glaring at Laxus. Izuku. Get lost. Laxus. What was that oh it's you the so called hero king of fairy tale, you know I've got to admit you pretty strong, but you're nothing compared to me. But before he could finish Izuku slammed his fist in Laxus' face sending him crashing into a wall. Shocking everyone, Laxus got up with a bleeding nose glaring at Izuku when I come back and take over this guild I'll torture you to death and then we'll see who gets the last punch and he shouted at Izuku. Izuku. I don't give a crap make Mira plead for your help again and I'll make sure to shatter every single bone in your body. Both men erupted with a magic aura that shook the ground below when Laxus vanished in the lightning bolt and Izuku walked away while everyone stayed silent, Izuku walked over to the bar and sat down growling. Mira. Thank you Izu. She said kissing his cheek when everyone broke out of their shock. Lucy. Ugh what a jerk why would anyone let him take over. Mira. We may not have a choice Laxus may inherit the guild since he's the master's grandson. Lucy. Huh. Izuku. I thought so. Mir leaned over the bar and rested her head on Izuku's shoulder as she told Lucy why Laxus may end up with the guild. Meanwhile Inatsu was busy raging when Urza finally accepted that they were a team shocking the guild at how dense she was to finally notice then and there. Urza. What do you say Izuku wants to join? Izuku. 
I'll think about it, but for now I want to rest. Later, after Natsu's team left and everyone went home for the night Izuku left to the bitch standing on the shore, he looked over the horizon when suddenly his eye began to bleed. Izuku. W what are you? Izuku asked holding his eye which burst into green fire. Izuku. Banishing shift new magic, but there's more something it's calling to me, but what is it this one magic saved me and Urza when we took that job, she told me what happened, but the face she had it was of fear and sadness, somehow she knows what this magic is I need to get to. The bottom of this, Mira. Hey Izuku. The flame vanished, and Izuku looked back to Mira who ran over to him with a smile. Izuku. What up Mira? Mira. Do you want to go on a date tomorrow? Izuku went wide eye really she nodded. Izuku. Sure. Mira. Hurry. She cheered before running and jumping into Izuku's arms. The next day. Izuku. How did we get here? Izuku is currently standing beside Mira, Makarov three guildmasters, and Yujima, while they are watching Natsu's team perform on stage. Izuku. They're such horrible actors. Mira. Ha their ass, talented actors. Izuku. Airhead. Mira. Wow you jerk. She said as they couldn't help but smile when Grey summoned a dragon which was Natsu in a dragon costume spitting fire, and then they decided to slay the dragon, which confused the audience that was when the princess thought that she should destroy the dragon, only to end up on fire for Urza to cut off her dress, exposing her body. Men. Oh yeah. Izuku Mira. Laugh. Izuku. Hey Mira can you do something for me? Mira. Sure what's up. As the three fairy tale wizards destroyed the stage a booming voice echoed through them all. That enough. They all stopped fighting and everyone turned their attention to the horrifying beast that walked onto the stage. Urza. W who are you beast? Beast. My name is not of importance however you fools have destroyed my kingdom and for that I will make you pay. His deep voice sounded as if he was talking over his own voice. Bray. Ha come and get it beast. Grey charged forward slashing his sword down, but the beast caught it and shattered the blade, then punched Grey into Urza, making them both smash into Natsu. Crowd. Get up fight the beast. Crowd. Oh no. Beast. Get out of here and never return. Urza. We won't abandon the princess. Beast. Then take her, but if you ever come back you will be my prisoners. The three took Lucy and ran away while the beast stood there looking down. Crowd. What do you think is gonna happen? Crowd too. I'm not sure. Suddenly the beast went on all four and jumped to the roof of the fast make castle Lucy was in. The crowd and masters were all brought to tears hearing his beautiful voice. The beast settled by sitting on the roof and covering his face and roaring one last time before the curtains closed and everyone began to cheer. Crowd. Yeah you're amazing beast. Crowd. We love you beast come back princess. Crowd. Beast 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 beast. Makarov. That was so beautiful. Wow. Master Bob. Indeed I wonder who it was. Mira. MHM, I wonder, she said before turning and walking away when something swung in and climbed to the roof holding her both sat there Mira on his lap and Izuku looking to the sky. Izuku. Mira I. Mira. SHH I know and I'm alright with sharing you with other girls. Izuku. Yeah but looking at the beast and then at my real self I think me and him are similar. Mira. How? Izuku. Because like the beast I found my light and this time I kept it instead of letting go of it. Mira smiled with tears as she kissed Izuku, and he kissed back. Izuku thoughts. Now I'm sure I've finally found where I'm meant to be thank you Mira. The next day suddenly Lok left and the entire guild searched for him all night however the one that found him was Lucy and Izuku. So while Lucy spoke to Lok and Lok told her his story as a celestial spirit Izuku hid in a tree, listening to his story about how the woman named Karen a famous celestial wizard died and how it's haunted him since the very day she's died. Dot. In the guild blue Pegasus three years ago a woman voice could be heard. I'm sorry boys. But I got an appointment at the salon this afternoon. Several men were surrounding her as the girls in a bar spoke rudely behind her back, jealous of all the attention she was receiving. Her master Bob was busy cleaning a glass cup at the bar, feeling pity for the greenie. Karen. Ugh I don't have time for this open gate of the golden ram Aries. A sheet bar could be heard and in a poof of smoke appeared a pink haired busty girl in a white short dress with parted sleeves, all made of sheep wool, she was simply adorable. Eris stood timidly in front of the woman and men as they all simply gushed over her. Eris. I'm sorry ma'am did you summon me, Karen? Look I gotta run so will you entertain these gentlemen for me, Aries? No not that again do I have to, one man. Look we just want to get to know you better, ma and two. Come on beautiful, Eris. I'm sorry, but I'm a celestial spirit I am not cut out for these types of things. Perrin enraged shouted at the poor girl who stood back terrified. Perrin. You're not refusing to follow orders are you? Eris. No of course not ma'am. And with that, the men took her away. I'm skip. Perrin was seated in front of the bar where the master Bob worked with a cup of wine. Perrin. Unbelievable. I mean who does that little hussy think she is, talking back to me like that? Bob. I know you're frustrated, but you shouldn't be so cruel to your celestial spirits my dead. Perrin. What? Well, as far as I'm concerned, she's my property so I can treat her any way I please. 
Bob began to phase through the bar it seems like you especially hard on poor Aries. Bob placed his hand under his chin and his other arm below his elbow holding it up. Bob. I've heard of all those awful things you've done to her. Like using her as a shield when you're fighting another wizard. Bob said reminiscing about when Karen was fighting someone and used Ares as a shield. Karen? Yeah and so what it's not like she's human or anything, celestial spirits are nothing but tools. And that pushed the line with Bob. Bone. Karen. They're living beings just like you and if you continue to treat them so deplorably they're bound to rebel against you. Karen moved back shaking in fear from witnessing the normally calm and cool master Bob, so pissed beyond belief. Time skip, slap, Ares yelping. Karen stood in front of Ares who was lying on the ground holding her red cheek with teary eyes, the woman held a wooden stick, and the objects in the room were all lying on the ground. Karen. How dare you go behind my back and tattle to master Bob. Ares, I don't know what you mean I never said a word to him honestly ma'am. Karen was staring at the girl, her purple crimson eyes shook with fury as she shouted at the poor spirit. Karen. You went and made the master angry with me. This means that now I am angry with you. Aries were shaking in fear and pain, holding her wounded cheek with tears I never told him it's the truth ma'am. I swear I didn't. Heron pulled out a chain with cuffs on each end presumably magic restraining cuffs. Heron. You're still feigning innocence. Aries. What are those for? Heron smiled a vicious smirk pure evil hid in her words as she spoke, I'm gonna use them to lock you up for seven days. Right here in the human world. Barry's eyes widened in fear for seven days, but your magic won't hold out that long. Perrin. I'm a lot stronger than you even know, Missy. She licked her lips with glee. Perrin. I'm gonna be just fine but you, on the other hand. Aries began to whimper in terror. Perrin. I've always wondered what a week in the human world would do to a celestial spirit. Perrin dropped the chain as causing a noise that sounded like a few coins in a sack as Ares begged for her to change her mind, but suddenly she was gone and replacing her was Loke holding Karen's wrist with a glare on his face. Perrin. Leo the lion. Loke spoke to Lucy of his efforts to stop her and how they were all in vain since he was still contracted to her. Meanwhile Izuku was shaking with rage, his grip began to break the branch into pieces as Loke continued. Perrin stood two feet away from Leo angrily speaking. Perrin. Why you how did you open your own gate? Leo. I'm a celestial spirit built for battle I'm strong and patient your abuse doesn't affect me like it does my fellow spirits. Perrin's glare lessened and she gasped stepping back. Leo. I'm warning you. If you ever lay a hand on Ares again you'll be sorry. Perrin began to shake in anger. Perrin. Who do you think you are threatening me? Leo. There's been something I've been meaning to say to you for a while I demand that you release me and Ares from our contract immediately. Perrin. What you demand me, Loke. Your behavior and the way you've treated us is deplorable. In fact, many spirits from our world are afraid of their keys falling into your hands. Perrin. Shut up that's not true, Leo. You're a disgrace to other celestial wizards. Perrin began to try and close Leo's gate however, in realizing she can't end through Leo telling her that he was using his own magic to keep him there he left to the ruins on the other side of town to wait for her to release their contract, but she never did each time she saw him, her figure looked worse than before she wasn't skinny, but her clothes were dirty a lot, and then the day came when she died, doing a job causing Leo to blame himself. Loke finished telling Lucy the story, and he began to vanish, that was when Lucy began to fight back and use all her magic to protect him, she screamed using all her power shocking Loke and Izuku, as all her magic ran out, and she finished by calling the spirit king's judgment wrong. The king began to tell Loke how he hated to see him in such a state, and how he was guilty of killing Karen, but Lucy stood up defending the boy that was when Izuku finally came into the mix. Izuku. Shut the hell up you mustache face. All of them turned to Izuku who held a pissed off expression. Lucy. Izuku, Loke. What are you doing here, Izuku? Shut it, Loke, Celestial King. A young man who are you to speak so rudely to me, Izuku? I'm just a boy who came to this world after his death, but a boy who doesn't belong here but even so. The two looked at Izuku with wide eyes, Izuku. I am a much better person than you. The king looked at Izuku in shock but also in confusion, Celestial King. You dare child how dare you speak to me in such a way, Loke thoughts. Why is the king so angry, Izuku? Loke had taken the consequences for your mistake for you failure, Celestial King. Silence. The world underneath them. Began to shake the seas began to rise as the king got angry, Izuku. You are no king you're pathetic absolutely pathetic you instead of protecting your daughter you simply watched as she suffered and did nothing, Celestial King. You dare you know absolutely nothing. The king raised his sword into the air and slammed it down, Lucy Loke. Izuku. Shocking them was Izuku who shattered the blade with his hand alone surprising even the king, Izuku. Shut the hell up, while well, Larry suffered for so long under that diamond's hands USAT down and watched your absolutely pathetic making your own children go through that and no do anything, Celestial King. Shut up, Izuku. And why should I, you're nothing but a scumbag what sick pleasure did you find in watching her cry tell me, Celestial King. 
Silence. Opening his palm he fired a massive beam of celestial energy at Izuku. Izuku. I refuse I'll make you pay for everything you've done even if I have to die to do it. Suddenly the same magic came to Izuku and his eye burst into green fire. And from it, he fired a massive beam of green energy from his chest. Both Isaacus and the Celestial Spirit King's attack collided sending everything flying and destroyed Lucy and Loke were shocked by Isaacus' power. Celestial King thoughts. What is this it's like he's destroying my magic, I can't even sense it anymore, how is this possible he's destroying my connection with the stars I need to stop this. Izuku I I I I. The beam of green grew larger and began to envelop the king's power reaching the king when Izuku fell to his knees tired and empty of all magic energy. Izuku. Damn that hurts. Celestial king. He ha 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 ha. The three looked at him in shock as the spirit king was also on his knees gasping for air. Celestial king. Impressive boy truly impressive I've never had a battle like that before you're incredible. Lok Lucy. A. Izuku. You're not too bad yourself old man. CK I'm just gonna call the spirit king CK. Boy you not only challenged me, insulted me, and battled me, but you nearly defeated me at the cost of your life all this for a spirit you don't even know to tell me why. Izuku looked down. Because like her I was also abused. The CK and Lucy alongside Loke were all shocked. My father would hit me every day since I was 4 to 12. My best friends turned their backs to me because I was weaker than them. And the boy I considered my brother attacked me every day I had no one, Izuku said. As the other three looked at him with broken hearts and remorse. Izuku. It got so bad my father's torture that he began to use a metal bat and nearly killed me with it. I watched as he was taken to an asylum for the insane I had no one, and even though my mother always smiled at me and told me it will all be alright, I knew she secretly hated me, but she tried to get over the feeling. Lucy. Izuku. CK. Young man hearing all you've said I feel like I can trust you see there is not a day that goes by where I don't torment myself for not protecting my child. It haunts me her tears, her screams, and she pleads, I never felt as though anyone felt the same, but seeing you, I see that I'm wrong, that is why I believe you should have Ares key. The three were shocked, Izuku. But I don't have celestial magic, CK. Then I will give you a portion of my own, Izuku. Are you sure? The CK smiled at Izuku. 100% be more sure of this than anything in my entire immortal life, Izuku. Then I accept I will protect Ares through everything and make her happy even if it were to be in sickness and in health, CK. Good well then Ares come on out. A poof of smoke appeared beside Izuku, and from it stood Ares looking down shy and blushing. Ares. Do you really mean that, Izuku? Yep definitely. Ares began to tear up before being hugged by Izuku there there he said patting her head as she cried into his shoulder, CK. Now for my final gift Loke you will be able to come back home, but from now on you'll protect your friend with all your life. Loke agreed and with that, the king left and Lucy got Leo the lion's key, while Izuku got Ares the next day everyone was surprised that Leo was a spirit, and Mira, Kana, and Levi were jealous at how Izuku was cuddling with Ares non-stop and snuggling into her neck, which he found comfy finally the day ended with Loke giving Natsus team tickets for a hotel at a beach, and they wanted Izuku to come, they practically dragged him away, that was the day things began to change between him and Urza. Let me know in the comments below if you guys want the next part. Also check out my other video that has been shown and left. Thank you for watching, if you enjoyed this video please like and share this video. And have a fantastic day bye.